Now on Good Morning Augusta, Aiken's government takes a drastic turn. Find out which city leader gave up his seat and why just ahead. Plus, one program is helping kids eat this summer. Just ahead, we take a closer look at how effective it is. Plus, graduation season is coming to a close, and we have advice on what employers are expecting from graduates as Good Morning Augusta starts right now. Live from Television Park in high definition, coverage you can count on. This is WJBF News Channel 6. Good morning, Augusta. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Augusta. I'm Dion Guillory. And I'm George Myers in for Jason Nappy. We'll have your forecast coming up in just a second. And George, it's nice to have you early this morning. Yes. I know it was a quick turnaround for you, but, but I'm wide awake, ready to go. Good to be working with you. Yeah, we have a lot to talk sure about do. this morning, so let's get straight to it. We're following some breaking news this morning. Actor and comedian Tracy Morgan is in critical condition this morning after an accident. We're told he was involved in a six car crash in New Jersey. New Jersey State Police say the wreck killed at least one person. Morgan was well known as a cast member of the hit show Saturday Night Live, and he also starred on the hit sitcom 30 Rock. Tracy Morgan in critical condition and a hospital after a six car crash. We, of course, will continue to follow this story and bring you new details as soon as we get them. The memorial service for poet and author Maya Angelou is just hours away. The ceremony is this morning at 10 o'clock at Wake Forest University in North Carolina, where she taught for more than 30 years. Former President Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey and First Lady Michelle Obama are all expected to be there. The service is closed to the public, but will stream live on the university's website. South Carolina voters are gearing up to head to the polls in three days. Primary elections are this Tuesday for the Palmetto State. You can count on News Channel 6 to bring you up to the minute updates on state and local races. We'll have results both on air Tuesday night and our, on our website, WJBF.com. As those elections are almost here, there's been a shakeup at the top of Aiken City government. City manager Richard Pierce resigned suddenly Friday. New Channel 6's Renetta DuBose explains what's behind this move. The city of Augusta will see, soon see some government changes too. The face of Augusta's leader is gearing up to change for the first time in nine years. This week on The Means Report, Mayor Deke Copenhaver and Mayor-elect Senator Hardy Davis talk about what's in store for both the city and the area and the men agree that the future is bright. It will be a very smooth transition. Hardy and I have been friends for years. I was a strong supporter in his mayoral campaign. I think it is great when you think in the past four mayoral elections, the people of Augusta have overwhelmingly supported candidates who are positive, progressive minded, looking to the future. But I look forward to working with Hardy for a smooth transition. And hear more from Mayor Copenhaver and Senator Davis about their plans for moving forward. Plus, get college saving advice from Will K. Wood from the Furman Investment Group. Hey, it's all on the Means Report. That's tomorrow at noon right here on WJBF News Channel 6. Augusta's commission clerk could soon be on the move. City leaders were so outraged over the cramped space in the clerk's office, they stopped the renovation of the municipal building until a solution can be found. After meeting with architects, Mayor Pro Tem Corey Johnson says the recommendation will be to move the clerk down the hall to another office, then find a new office for the city attorney. We looked at what would be most efficient as well as effective, uh, but at the same time accommodate her and what she needs to do to function, and so that would be the best way to move. Johnson doesn't know how much the move will cost. It is not known what will happen to the space currently being used as the clerk's office. 705, now a well-known Payne College leader, is out of jail this morning after being arrested for DUI. News Channel 6 has learned that Brandon Brown, the college's vice president for institutional advancement, was arrested around 2 Friday morning. According to a jail document, Brown was pulled over for failing to maintain his lane near the intersection of Broad Street and St. Sebastian Way. A driver in a motorcycle crash is still recovering this morning. Richmond County investigators say he's currently in critical condition. The crash happened last week outside the Master Cinema on Washington Road. 44-year-old Regina Allen was a passenger on the bike when the two hit a parked car. Currently, there are no charges filed in this case. 
Richmond County authorities are investigating an attempted robbery that sent a woman to the hospital. The victim was shot at the corner of Lumpkin Road and Richmond Hill Road. Investigators say the woman was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. The suspect in this case is still on the loose. The world gathered on the beaches of Normandy to celebrate the 70th anniversary of D-Day. More than 150,000 troops invaded Normandy on June 6, 1944. The fierce battle helped turn the tide against Nazi Germany in World War II. World leaders gathered to pay tribute to those who sacrificed their lives. President Obama called Normandy democracy's beachhead. 12th District Congressman John Barrow hosted a meeting to discuss issues surrounding veterans affairs right here in the CSRA. The congressman called this meeting an information gathering and brought in many experts in the health care field. He says in order to fix the problem, everyone must come together to talk and listen to each other. And those of us who are determined to get to the bottom of this are not going to rest until we do get to the bottom of it. There's no excuse for the delays in health care that so many of our veteran patients have experienced. The congressman did call the meetings constructive, but admits they still have many stones to turn before this issue is resolved. Time now is 7.07. Let's join with uh, Chief Meteorologist George Myers with a look at our first weather. And George, we have this um, constant system that keeps bothering us in the evenings. Or can we expect more of that today? Yeah, Dion. All right, just hold on to that umbrella. Yes, right. Just in case. All right, thanks, George. <laughs> Aiken is raising awareness about childhood cancer with Carly's Rays of Hope 5K today. The run begins at 930 at the village at Woodside in Aiken. Registration begins at 830. Runners are encouraged to wear white so they can be splashed with color. Proceeds go toward the Carly Rays of Hope Foundation. 11 year old Carly died of a brain tumor back in 2008. While some kids are out enjoying the warm weather and having fun, others may be worrying about where their next meal will come from. News Channel 6's Margaret Ann Carter found some sites where lunch is on the house, even when school is out. And the Boys and Girls Club is not the only place serving summer lunch. If you're in need of a helping hand, there are more than 50 programs serving breakfast and lunch. We have a list of all those sites on our website, WJBF.com. You can also find programs near you by texting FOOGA to 877-877. Still to come on Good Morning Augusta, one local business is helping to make some sweet music right here in the CSRA. We will tell you how just ahead. But first, before you trade your cap and gown for a suit and briefcase, you have to know what employers are looking for. We'll tell you how and what when we come back. Time now is 7-11. You're watching Good Morning Augusta, your only choice for weekend morning news at 7 a.m.